The debate about which is the correct site is sometimes met with anger and hostility towards the opposing view. And if you have watched this video to this point, some of you may disagree with my assessment of these holy sites. Welcome to the Garden Tomb. Is this the actual place Jesus was buried after his death? Or is the location at the site of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, where tradition claims both the death on the cross and the burial took place? A huge part of going to Israel is seeing the Bible come alive, but this video is going to be a bit different than my previous reviews. First, I'll go over the biblical narrative of Jesus on the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection. Then I'll touch on a few facts on the Garden Tomb and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And finally, I will give a warning to all of us Christians on not falling into a certain trap from our enemy. After Jesus' arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was brought to Caiaphas, the high priest, where they had a sham of a trial and Jesus was beaten. Then he was brought to Pilate, where he was sentenced to death and terribly beaten by the Romans. Then he was escorted to Golgotha and nailed to the cross. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Then the entire reason Jesus came to earth happened. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. Then Jesus was buried by a nearby tomb. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Then the core moment of our Christian faith took place, as few of the women went to the tomb on that Sunday morning. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. If Jesus would have never died, we would have no path to a relationship with God, and we would all be doomed to hell. If Jesus wouldn't have rose from the dead, then Jesus would have been proven to be a liar, and proven to not be the Son of God, and we'd still be doomed to eternity in hell. But he did die for us. He conquered the grave. And he rose from the dead, fulfilling all the prophecies of the Messiah. Now, is this where Jesus hung on the cross? Is this the tomb in which Jesus was put in? Or was Jesus' death and burial at this location where the Church of the Holy Sepulchre was built over it? First, let's look at Golgotha. Golgotha is promising as an authentic site, though it has deteriorated over the centuries. When you look at it from head on, it looks like a face on the side of a cliff. Romans crucified criminals as punishment, but also as a warning to everyone else. So the crucifixion would likely be near a well-traveled road. This Golgotha is located near the starting point of the road to Damascus. The garden tomb is a little more problematic. It was unearthed in 1867 and is believed to be from the 7th or 8th century BC. This would mean that this garden tomb was not a new or unused tomb as the Bible describes. It's possible that this Golgotha could be the correct location where Jesus died, but it's also highly probable the actual tomb has never been located. Keep in mind how many massive earthquakes this area has had in the last 2,000 years. So the actual tomb could have been destroyed by man, or natural causes, or simply hasn't been found yet. Or, we have the traditional site located inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The church was first built in 335 AD by Constantine's mother, Helena. Here is a cross-section of the church. This is where Jesus is believed to have been crucified, and this is the tomb that tradition says he was buried in. This location was outside the city wall back in Jesus' day, but there is over 300 years that passed between Jesus' crucifixion and this church being built. Yes, the Bible does say that there was a tomb nearby in the garden, but me personally, it's hard to believe that a rich man like Joseph would have had a tomb this close to the spot where Romans regularly killed people. I guess the question we don't have the answer for is, how close does nearby mean? Also, in regards to Helena, she claimed to have brought back to Rome authentic relics from Israel, like the true cross, the nails, and the crown of thorns. Perhaps it was wood and nails used from a crucifixion, but it's a stretch to believe that they were directly from Jesus. And no way a crown of thorns could have remained over 300 years without being damaged or severely deteriorated. Maybe the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is the authentic site of Jesus' death and resurrection, but there is no definitive proof one way or the other. 
which leads me to my final point in this review, a warning to all of us who are Christians. Right when you enter the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, there is a stone called the Stone of Unction, which tradition says Jesus was laid on after his death when they prepared his body for burial. Many people all over the world come here to pray and lay personal items like jewelry, clothing, cell phones, and even place babies on in hopes of sanctifying these items and receiving a blessing from God. With all due respect, this does remind me of a situation from the Old Testament. In Numbers chapter 21, we find the children of Israel complaining once again about being hungry and thirsty and tired of eating manna God provided for them to eat in the wilderness. Then God sent venomous snakes throughout the camp that bit the people and many died. Then the people repented and God told Moses to make a snake and put it on a pole. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. The imagery is definitely foreshadowing Jesus being lifted up on the cross, and for those of us that look to the cross and what Jesus did, we will live. But that's not the point I want to make here. Many, many, many years later, the people of Israel began to worship this bronze snake. So during the days of King Hezekiah, he had to deal with it. He removed the high places, smashed the sacred stones, and cut down the Asherah poles. He broke into pieces the bronze snake Moses had made, for up to that time the Israelites had been burning incense to it. We have to be very careful not to fall into the trap from the devil and end up worshiping these possible sites Jesus could have visited in his time on earth and specifically the places and claimed relics relating to his death, burial, and resurrection. I'm not saying everyone praying at this stone of unction is worshiping the stone, but the Bible has shown over and over again how easy it is to be led astray by the enemy. The debate about which is the correct site is sometimes met with anger and hostility towards the opposing view. And if you have watched this video to this point, some of you may disagree with my assessment of these holy sites. Please remember, we are Christians. We are supposed to be set apart and act differently than the rest of the world. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. We must not fight over things like this. It is inconsequential where the exact location of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection took place. Furthermore, we need to be on guard from the enemy. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. When Jesus was confronting the religious leaders, he said, You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Again, please understand, I'm not at all trying to be offensive to anyone who strongly believes the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is the actual site, or if you believe strongly that Golgotha and the Garden Tomb is the correct site. It truly doesn't matter where it happened. What is most important is that the tombs at both locations are empty. The fact is, Jesus died and rose, and his body is no longer here, giving us great hope in what Jesus promised in John chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. How amazing it is to have that peace in our hearts when we fully trust in what Jesus did on the cross and all that he promises us. And look, you can visit either of these sites and have a wonderful spiritual experience. I'm not an overly emotional man, but three times on my trip to Israel, I teared up. The first time was at my Jordan River baptism. The second time was seeing Jerusalem for the first time from the Mount of Olives. And the third time, after visiting the garden tomb, we had communion nearby. And while sitting there and just thinking back on what Jesus did for a screwed up and woefully imperfect me, I got emotional. So it probably not being the actual tomb, which the facts kind of back up in my humble opinion, it did not matter. It was still a wonderful experience I will never forget. So this concludes my review of the garden tomb and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. I hope you enjoyed it, but if you didn't, I still appreciate you watching all the way through to the end. In my next video, I will be reviewing the Pool of Bethesda and what Jesus did here. But until then, thank you for watching, and as always, God bless.